You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This week, we're talking about the topic of expatriation, of emigrating to live abroad in a different country. And we've talked about living abroad um, in a previous uh, episode. And this whole subject area of emigration uh, and living abroad is something that I am really interested in exploring uh, more uh, as a way of getting more freedom in your life. And this episode is an interview with a friend of mine called George, um, who has emigrated from Greece to the UK. And it's an example uh, of some of the barriers and issues that you encounter when emigrating. Uh, George is talking about his experience of emigrating within the European Union, um, which is a kind of real opportunity that exists for anyone living in the EU, because you can go and live abroad and you do not face some of the uh, legal uh, barriers that you will face trying to, to move into other countries. So it's a really interesting opportunity that people have who live in the EU. And if you do live in the EU, I think it's really something uh, to consider as, as an option that is available to you. Uh, this option may not be available forever, um, especially with uh, the way things are going in the EU. But even if you don't live in the EU, George does talk about some of the um, important considerations uh, about emigrating that uh, anybody who wants to make that decision will face. So I hope you enjoy uh, the discussion and thank you so much for listening. I'm very pleased to have a special guest today. Uh, it's a friend of mine, George. Welcome, George. Hello. Nice to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. Thanks so much for coming on. So, um, George, the reason that I wanted to talk to you and the, and the reason I thought it would be interesting for other people um, to hear um, our conversation is that one of the things I've covered on The Voluntary Life before is um, living abroad. Um, as one of the ways of getting more freedom in your life and of finding, you know, a way to, you know, actually, yeah, uh, basically get more freedom in your life, achieve more happiness. And I've talked to um, someone who made the choice to move from the US uh, to China. Um, and I thought it'd be interesting to talk to you um, for two reasons. One, because um, you've, you've made the choice to move from Greece to the UK um, but also because Greece is a really interesting place at the moment. Yes, yes. <laughs> a lot going on. <laughs> yes, I have been talking about this all the time recently. Yeah. Everyone has a question about yeah. Greece. I, I think I'm the Minister of Finance. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that's what I thought would be interesting to talk about. But first of all, just as a bit of background, can you just um, explain you know, where you grew up, where you came from, when you came over here and stuff? Yes, so I grew up in Athens. Uh, capital of Greece, uh, up to about the age of uh, 25 when I decided that I wanted to move and uh, I moved to the UK. Uh, the first place in the UK that I moved to was Milton Keynes, then I lived in Northampton and then um, St Albans and finally I ended up in London. Uh, before moving permanently here I also had a temporary move here uh, earlier on uh, when I came to do my master's degree in 2002 and that's when I lived in Canterbury. Right. So when you first came to the UK it wasn't a choice like right I'm leaving Greece you were just coming here to study and spend yes. some time abroad. Yes. So when did you decide like well first of all have yeah. you have you in your own mind have you now moved for good do you now consider yes. you have? Yes I've definitely moved out of Greece for good, right? Um, and I am happy living in the UK. Mm. Uh, obviously, things change, and I don't know what future will bring, and what policies will become popular here, and what changes will happen. But as things are at the moment, I consider myself uh, just as British as I consider myself Greek. Sure, absolutely. So, when did you decide? Right, I'm, I'm leaving Greece. The, the final decision, the final drop was um, in 2005 when I had just finished my military service in Greece and I had all the 
negative memories from that and then seeing that uh, even though I, I believe to have what it takes to get a good job and to um, achieve greatness in my life, I saw that I, I needed uh, to uh, employ personal favors, political favors in order to not even to, to succeed, but just to survive. Mm. And that really, really annoyed me. So at some point, I think I decided that there is no future anymore in this country if I want to be uh, based on my own merit. And uh, this is when I decided that I have a lot of self-respect and I have to move out to make it on my own. Mm. Is that something that is a common thing that you saw a lot of people in your generation or other people doing or is this unusual? I mean, what was it, the experience it, that you it had? It was very unusual at the time um, because things were going well in Greece. Uh, so it's not the same as with uh, many other countries that uh, you've seen uh, flow of immigration out of because the living conditions are bad or the standards or the, the, the salaries are not good. No, at that time actually uh, everyone in Greece was uh, very happy. Mm. Um, I was probably one of the few people that were disappointed and the reason is not so much because people are lazy or anything like that. I think it's just a matter of not strong enough principles. So you have a very productive and a very talented person that could make it in the UK, but they decide to stay in Greece because um, they can get by using political favors mm. and using uh, other means towards success or surviving. It may not be in the long run as beneficial, for them, but it is the easy option, the safe option. And obviously, uh, at that time, it wasn't common. I, when I chose, when I told my friends I'm moving to the UK, the first reaction was, you're stupid, what are you doing? You mm -hmm. go to a country where it rains all the time, you won't have the beach near you, uh, and you'll have to work from day until night to just uh, make ends meet, why don't you just stay here, you know, ask your dad to go to a politician, to ask for a favor, you can get a good job or a decent job or a really good job and you won't have to suffer for it, you won't have to work really hard for it. And uh, at that point I was even questioning myself, is it uh, the best choice to make or should I just uh, consider staying here? But really I thought, no, you know, I, I don't deserve this. I should not have to uh, owe a favor to anyone for just doing what I believe I do best, mm. to work. Absolutely. Well, I definitely want to ask you more about Greece, because yeah. um, uh, like, it is absolutely fascinating. But just, just first, because I, I also think it's really interesting to talk about the process of choosing to go and, and live in another country, and especially because it, I think it is very rare. There's not that many people that do it. Um, so, you know, how do you, you chose London or England at least, you know, yeah. and I'm guessing that that's to do with, you know, a number of factors, including the practicality of where you can go. What, what was your choice about why, why England for you? Well, uh, I, I could probably trace the, the, the seeds of this decision back in 1985 when I was five years old and uh, my mother back then was diagnosed with malignant melanoma. Oh, wow. uh, in Greece and the, the, the Greek state hospital that she went to gave her six months to live um, and at that point my family liquidated any or the biggest part of assets or whatever assets it had and my mother came to London to a private hospital Cromwell Hospital Right. Um, it cost pretty much a fortune mm. for my mother to come here and to be treated for about a year she stayed here for a whole year and uh, she's still alive. Right. So in my little mind as I was a growing up child, you know, I, I had questions. I was thinking probably um, why did my mother have to go to England? Why did the 
doctor that saved my mom's life have a strange foreign name instead of my doctor mm. who has a Greek name. Well, how, how is this possible? Why couldn't they save her in Greece? Obviously, over the years and going through education in Greece, my mind changed. I became a lot more confused. Uh, teachers are part of the problem in Greece because they are part of this Ponzi scheme, as I described it earlier. They strike all the time. They are mostly of uh, left-wing ideology. And they, um, the, the kids naturally idolize their teachers. Mm. So I was one of those. And I, I was very confused. I kept uh, thinking that uh, any, any questions I have over what the teachers told us to be reality were just uh, that I'm not clear enough, that I haven't understood it well enough. And uh, still, the UK was always on my mind as a completely different recipe to the rest of Europe, what the rest of Europe was following. And, uh, well, after a few years, after I finished my first degree and the time came to do my master's, I thought, well, okay, I can speak the language in the UK and it's a successful country, so why not? I'll just go there to do my master's degree. And when I landed here, I felt at home. Um, it was... Okay, putting aside the driving on the left, everything, <laughs> <laughs> everything else felt natural. <laughs> Suddenly, I didn't have to bribe my way into getting things done. Suddenly, um, I... my my um, achievements were based on merit and not on favors. I found this liberating. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what they say that uh, a common problem for expats is the culture shock. So they go into a new country and they are shocked by the new traditions that they meet and they, they, they find it difficult to integrate. I realized that I had been living for 25 years in a culture shock right, and right. <laughs> coming here, <laughs> it got cured. Yeah, I think that's very interesting because I mean, it's also interesting for me to hear because, you know, having grown up here, I, I have lived abroad, I lived in Germany for a while, but having grown up here, I see, you know, all of the constraints on personal freedom and all of the bureaucracy and stuff that I encounter in this country. Yes. But obviously, you know, your experience has been... Like obviously, you know that England's got serious problems as well, but it's I guess the comparison that you're working with is what it was like back in Greece. It's it's so much. It's even it's even worse than countries like France and Germany and Belgium. And you know, the, you hear the Eurosceptics, libertarian most of them in the UK, uh, blaming everything on um, the EU. But actually, looking at it from a Greek perspective, the EU is. A source of common sense and probably liberation for a person that lives in Greece and wants to be an entrepreneur or work in a business because it is just very close to a Soviet state. Right. You mean within Greece? Uh, Greece. Yeah, Greece right, is right. Like, it runs like a Soviet state. Yeah. Well, I wonder, you know, for you, when you're Looking on the choice that you've made about expatriating, you know, what would you say have been like the main benefits and disbenefits? Well, benefits, I mean... You've sort of talked about some of them, but... The benefits are what you see around you, you know. Um, I managed to build a comfortable life, successful life. I, I managed all of this through my own work and I'm proud of it. Uh, I did not have to ask for any favors, as I mm. said. So this is a very big factor for my satisfaction. Other mm. people may be comfortable with it. I wasn't, and that's why I left. Um, also, every day when I go to work, I'm surrounded by people that share the same values of hard work as I do, of freedom, of uh, personal responsibility, uh, something that is not the case in Greece. Most of the time in Greece, uh, people are expecting everything from the government. They, right. they advocate a nanny state. They are not comfortable with freedom. And that is not just in terms of the economy, it's also in terms of uh, minority rights, gay rights. You know, it, 
it is a society that is based on the principle of the superiority of the collective over minorities. Right. The smallest minority being the individual. Mm. Uh, therefore, you know, the, the benefit of living in this society, of living in a society that guarantees an, a, a great uh, element of freedom where I can progress and move towards the direction that I want to move on, uh, is just the best, the biggest benefit that I've um, obtained through moving here. The other benefit, which is indirect, is the fact that I'm not funding the parasitic Greek state any longer. When I moved here, I benefited from the UK, as I said, and the UK has benefited through uh, taking the output of my work. Mm. Well, if I ha had I been in Greece now, I would be still working very hard, but uh, the, the, the output of my work would have been used to support the huge public sector, the wasteful uh, public sector, the, the closed shop professions that really made, th these are the, 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 the professions, that, th these are the, the policies that made Greece so disappointing to me. Right. So I am actually quite happy that now this whole structure is on its knees mm. because me and a lot of other people like me, productive people, have chosen to move out and obviously it cannot survive without these kinds of people. Yeah, you've done your own mini Atlas Shrugged yes, on yes, Greece. Yes, I can. <laughs> I am on strike. <laughs> Excellent. What about the disbenefits of, of uh, expatriating? Oh, well, there, there's loads of them. I mean, it's never an easy decision. Uh, naturally, when you've lived in a country for many, many years, you're used to its ways, you're used to the, the, the climate, the food, the people, the... You have made your friends, you know, and I still miss my high school friends and I still miss my family and I actually worry about them in the current situation. Mm. Also, being an immigrant means that you have to prove yourself twice at work. Uh, and I'm saying this because I believe that, and I would be guilty of it as well if it happened, you know, any employer mm when they have a choice of two identical candidates for one job, one is a foreigner, the other one is a local, they would choose the local and there's nothing discriminatory about it. The local probably speaks the language better and assuming that everything else is identical, then why not go for the local man? So... Uh, More of a known quantity. You yes, know. Yeah. exactly. Uh, so as a, as a foreigner, as an immigrant, you have to either be better at the same price cheaper at the same quality of work or both at right. the same time. Right. Otherwise, you will not make it. And, you know, I understand this and this makes things a bit harder for me, but it has never been a real issue. But just it would act as a word of advice as well yeah. to anyone who wants to move somewhere that it's not easy. Yeah. It's not as easy as it is for the locals. It's probably a bit harder. Yeah. So if you choose to do it, you're basically taking on that challenge. Yes. Right. Do you have any advice for um, other people who, who might be considering um, expatriating? Yes. Well, my first advice is go where your heart tells you. So if you are a left uh, winger, go to North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come to England. <laughs> Go to Cuba, I don't know, go to Venezuela, if you think that that is the best place to go to. Because, you know, it's, it's funny that um, you have people in different countries voting for policies, uh, like the friends, for example, voted for a socialist, or the Greeks are bringing, it looks like the, the, the radical left party is going to be winning the next elections, yet you don't see many people actually escaping the, do that. Yeah, the, you don't see many people that are complaining about capitalism being the source of all evil in Greece. Well, they're not actually immigrating to North Korea. If they're so unhappy with it, surely they should have made a move there. Instead, you see a lot of people moving to where there's more freedom. So uh, now, in terms of serious advice, what I would say is the most important is the language. Um, learn the language, try to be 
to live the local language, not just to learn it from the textbook, you know, rent movies, watch, watch them without subtitles, read the local newspapers, go to the country that you're planning to move to and uh, do an intensive course, maybe get a job at a bar or a pub or a, or a McDonald's or something, just get a job to mingle with the locals mm. and learn the language properly. Uh, then if you are planning to do um, to work in a business as a professional, do the professional qualification, start doing that. Uh, the, there is... You mean the local ones are the place where you're moving to? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, they're international nowadays. Right. So you have, you have a lot of people that expect to get a job based on their academic qualifications. Unfortunately, academic qualifications are not sufficient. And the reason they're not sufficient is because, let's say a recruiter in the UK gets hundreds of CVs that have degrees from Nigeria, Greece, Bulgaria, Zimbabwe, I don't know where. Mm. They don't know how good the local education sure. system is. So if they're looking for an accountant, they are much more likely to hire someone who instead has a professional qualification or on accounting that is um, globally recognized. Right. Uh, for example, if I'm an auditor, so the, the Institute of Internal Auditors issues a uh, qualification that is globally accepted. Mm. Uh, so if, if anyone wants to move to the UK or anywhere else, I think the best step to take to secure a professional career is to do the professional qualification of the career that they want to follow. If they want to be an entrepreneur, they just need to do their homework mm. and it, they may find out actually that it's easier to set up a business in the host country rather than the, the original country, the country that they come yeah. from. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. I definitely I see exactly what you mean about the education yes. and the, you know, the uh, professional qualifications are effectively the business, the business relevant stuff. So that, yeah. that makes a lot of sense to me. Two more, two more words of advice. Mm. Be prepared to work hard. Uh, nothing like you're used to. As I said, as a foreigner, you have to prove yourself twice mm. and also lower your expectations to start with. Naturally, countries that are freer, they tend to have a lower starting point. Uh, so the minimum wage is lower or uh, compared to the cost of living, the minimum wage is lower. So I would say that the, 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 the minimum wage in London is, it may be on paper higher than what it is in Greece, but it is actually lower. When in you terms consider, of cost of living. Yes. Yeah. When you consider, so a lot of people are probably thinking, oh, why should I move to the UK or to the States or wherever it is to just make the same or a little bit more as a first salary. But when I started here, I probably didn't make much more than I was making in Greece. But within seven years, I have tripled my salary. And it's natural. Here you get paid for what you deliver. And in order to prove that you can deliver, you have to put in the effort and mm. no one is going to pay you a lot of money when you haven't proven that you can deliver. But once you have proven that, then sky is the limit. And this is why people move from um, really nanny state type of countries to freer countries. Mm. Right, right. Cool. So I guess uh, my last question before we come on to talk about Greece, you know, what is your view about, as I said before, I think it is quite rare, the choice that you've made. Um, what's your view about why don't more people go and live abroad? You know, wh what is stopping them? Well, at the end of the day, the, the major factor that um, is uh, stopping people from uh, the, 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 just taking the step to move abroad is legal restrictions mm, yeah. uh, you know I, if Greece wasn't in the EU I probably wouldn't be here um, and certainly there are countries in the world that are freer than the UK but I could not move there you couldn't get yeah because you yeah. couldn't get in yeah exactly so thanks to the EU I'm here and <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm very happy for that and um, well 
And that's a tricky thing to get over, legal restrictions. Obviously, it's different in each country, but that's a real... Yes. I mean, that's not a question of if I put in the effort and work, then I'm, I will be rewarded. This is just no. stupid regulations. It's, it's actually, you know, I think legal restrictions in, on immigration have a counter effect. They do not deliver what they are designed to deliver. So you're putting the more restrictions you put you're going to be you're going to end up with all those immigrants that have no value to add they're probably criminals they're probably outlaws and obviously they find a way to sneak in mm -hmm. because they're outlaws anyway at the same time you're leaving out all the people that want to abide by the law and be productive yeah <laughs> so i think restrictions to immigration are a, a big mistake in my opinion mm -hmm. um then the other thing that's stopping people is the lack of strong principles of, of, uh, of uh, uh, principle-based actions in their life. They, um, I, I will tell you again an example from Greece. Yeah. Uh, many years ago I was watching uh, the television they had, the, the, the girl that uh, got uh, in the equivalent of A-levels that you have here, she got the highest grade in the whole of Greece. And they were interviewing and they said, what are your aspirations for the future? And she said, oh, well, I cannot wait, wait to finish my university degree so that I can get a job in the public sector where no one will be able to move me from that job anymore. I will not be threatened by unemployment. And I was thinking, sorry, I didn't mention that uh, uh, public sector in Greece, you cannot fire public sector employees. They right. cannot be made redundant. It's they illegal. Just can't be. It's illegal. Wow. Yeah. So... When you see probably the most talented person in Greece, you know, the, the young person in Greece, the, the, the most talented student, the one that got the highest grade out of the whole country, telling you that.